All right, this video is going to go over the mixture problems from the class handout. Before we get into the problems, because that's actually the easiest way and the best way to learn how to do these, I want to show you the picture of the buckets. When we do dry mixture problems, we're going to do bucket plus bucket equals bucket. So whatever we're mixing together, each thing we're mixing is going to get a bucket. In the bottom of the bucket, we're going to put the amount that we have. In the top of the bucket, we're going to put the unit price. Now, for our mixture bucket, um, we can, this is our mix. You will either be given the total value of the mix, or if you're not given the total value, you will also need to put the amount in the bottom of that bucket and the unit price. One or the other, either the total value or the amount and unit price. Okay, let's look at our first example. Okay, here's our first problem. How many pounds of jelly beans selling for $2 a pound should be added to 4 pounds of mixed candy selling for $2.75 a pound to produce a mixture worth $27? Okay, so what I'm trying to find is the number of pounds of jelly beans needed. So I set up my buckets. I'm adding jelly beans and mixed candies. So I have a bucket for each. I add them together and I get my mix. So what I need to do is in the top of the bucket I put the unit price and in the bottom of the bucket I put how much I have. So for the jelly beans they are two dollars a pound. Now instead of writing two dollars per pound I'm going to write two hundred cents per pound just so that I can get away from the decimals. The mixed candy is two hundred and seventy five cents per pound. And the mix, I don't have a price per pound. Remember in the um, introduction I said that you either need a total value or you need a unit price and an amount. This one gives me a total value of $27. Now I need to write that as 2700 cents because if these units are in, in uh, cents then my mixture has to be in cents as well. Okay, in the bottom of the bucket I put how much I have. I don't know how many pounds of jelly beans I have. That's my X. I have four pounds of mixed candy. And since I have a total value for my mix, I don't need to put anything else in that bucket. The thing that's so great about mixture problems is your equation comes from multiplying your buckets. I have 200 times X plus 275 times 4 equals 27 there's my equation. All I need to do is solve it. Alright, I've solved my equation and I get x equals 8. So go back to your, your picture and go up to your bucket. Here's my x. What did that stand for? It stood for the amount of jelly beans. And that's exactly pounds of jelly beans needed. That's exactly what I'm trying to find. So you've got your answer, you put your number four by your solution, and now we're going to write our conclusion. Therefore, we need eight pounds of jelly beans. There you have it. Okay, let's look at the next one. Here's our next problem. Marion bluegrass seed sells for $8 a pound. Kentucky bluegrass seed sells for $6.50 a pound. How much of each should be used to make a mixture weighing 10 pounds and selling for $7 a pound? This is a little different than the last one because I'm not given a total value for the mix. Instead, I'm giving a price per pound and a total weight. All right, let's fill in what we know. Price per pound, I've got 800 cents per pound here. I have got 650 cents per pound here. And my mix is $7 per pound. That's 700 cents per pound. Alright, now as far as the amounts, I'm supposed to find out how much of each I have. Now I'm just using one variable, but to find out what to put in the bottom of the buckets, I need to use the fact that I've got 
10 pounds total. So this is a 10. If you have two numbers that add up to 10, you let one of them be x and the other is 10 minus x. Now if you add x and 10 minus x, you should get 10, which we do. So now my equation is relatively simple. I need to multiply my buckets. So I'm going to take 800 times x plus 650 times 10 minus x equals 700 times 10. All right, let's solve that. All right, I've solved the equation, and I get x equals 3 and 1 third. That would be the amount that I have of the Marion bluegrass seed. To find out how much I have of the Kentucky, I would take 10 minus x, which is 6 and 2 thirds. Okay, so for my solution, I get x equals 3 and 1 third, 10 minus x equals 6 and 2 thirds. So therefore, we need 3 and 1 thirds pounds of Marion bluegrass seed and 6 and 2 thirds pounds of Kentucky bluegrass seed. Here's our third problem. Mr. Ling has five pounds of nuts that sell for $3 a pound. How many pounds of nuts that sell for $4 a pound must be added to have a mixture that sells for $5 a pound? Okay, I've drawn my three buckets, I've written my fine statement, and now I'm ready to fill in my buckets. So this I have a $3 a pound, so I'm going to write 300 cents per pound. I have a $4 per pound mix, so I'm going to write 400 cents per pound. And then I have a mix that sells for $3.50 per pound, so I'm going to write 350 cents per pound. All right, now it says how many pounds of nuts that sell for $4 a pound? That's what we're trying to find, so put your X there must be added to have a mixture that sells for three um, what is it $3.50 a pound okay so that's my unknown I do know that there are five pounds of the nuts that sell for 300 cents a pound so this is a five now if I look at what I have here I have five plus X equals, this should be 5 plus x. That's how much I have of the mix. Just look at what you have in the bottom of your buckets. Alright, for my equation, I'm going to multiply the buckets. 300 times 5 plus 400 times x equals 350 times the quantity 5 plus x. And let's solve it. Okay, you can see that I've solved the equation. We get x equals 5. x equals 5. Here's x. That stands for the amount of $4 per pound nuts. That's what I'm trying to find, number, four, number of pounds of $4 nuts to add. So I can go ahead and write my conclusion. Therefore, he needs 5 pounds of the $4 nuts. All right, here are my final notes on mixture problems. First of all, in each bucket, put the amount in the bottom of the bucket and the cost per unit in the top. And then you get your equation by multiplying the buckets. Now, if the last bucket's total value is already given, don't multiply anything for that bucket, just use the total value. And my other hint is to change dollar amounts into cents so that you don't have to deal with the decimals.